Hey there, I want to show you five tips and tricks that are actually useful whether you're a beginner or you're a pro level user in FL Studio. If you're new, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button and let's get started. All right, so right here we have a session opened up and the first tip I'm going to show you is selecting your pickout tools, right? So right here, you can, if you want to um, draw a note, we have to select the pen tool to put something down here or if you want to mute maybe a section, you have to click this right here to mute some or you just simply memorize, you know, the um, functions. But even if you just right click and scroll with your mouse wheel, you can actually hover across the tools, for example. So I want to cut this loop, right? If I select, you can see it's a single loop right here. So I'll have to just right click and scroll my mouse wheel and slide across. Then now I have the knife tool. I can simply chop it up and I can see, and if I want to mute this section, I can simply scroll over to my mute tool as well. This is my mute tool and now it's mute. Really easy to use and this works as well in the piano roll. So let's let's open up a chord, right? So if I want to slice this chord up, I can just simply scroll across and then just chop it up. You can see now it's all chopped up, right? And if I want to um, mute a section of the chord, I can just come right here. And if I want to unmute it back, same thing. Really easy to use in FL Studio. So on that tip, I want to show you is how to quickly adjust the velocity of your notes in FL Studio. So most times I know you have to select a particular note, right? Then you come down here and then you adjust the loudness or the velocity of the notes. Do you know if you just left, if you just left click and then you actually hover across, you can see with your mouse wheel while holding the left click down, you can actually select the velocity, move the velocity of the notes. So let's say I want this. Let's move on. I can actually highlight both. And you can see they are all being moved. So this is a really fast way to move or, or modify the velocity of your notes in FL Studio for chords or melodies. So the third tip is track mode in FL Studio. Now, this is only available in FL Studio 20, all right? So do you know you can actually load up VSTs from the track mode? So for example, I want to play some piano chords on these beats. So what I have to simply do is, you know the usual way you do it before, you come to your channel rack and then you load up the VST, right? I can actually just come right here, tracks, right click track six, track mode, come to instrument track, then I want to use this VST. Um, piano V2. And now you can see it's all loaded up here, all right? So now I'm going to play some chords. Really loud. So, and then when I just open it up, you can see I have access to the chords. I can quantize this. And so when I play this side, it sounds like. And you can actually open up the VST by simply double clicking on the name right here. The, that is the Piano V2. And then this is the VST loaded up right here. So it's really easy to use. You can, if you are used to producing track mode, like maybe in Cubase or Ableton or some other doors that work in the track mode or style, you can incorporate the same workflow in FL Studio really easy, really fast to use as well. Also, remember that I do teach one-on-one -on -one private lessons if you are struggling to make better music or if you want to move even much faster than the pace you currently at. I'm going to teach you personally how to make much better music faster and better. So all you have to do is click the link in the description below that says one-on-one -on -one private lessons and we're going to get started pronto. So the fourth tip is how you can easily search for your virtual instruments or your plugins in FL Studio. Now, I know a lot of people do complain and say FL Studio is not organized because it's hard, or rather it's a bit harder to find your plugins in FL Studio. And that's because they typically use this um, search icon right here. But what this does, this search icon, it actually scans through your entire FL Studio directory, not just your plugins, all right? So if I want to add a virtual instrument, I can simply come right here, right click, insert, and then come to open plugin picker. So let's say I want to open lounge lizard, right? I can simply search lounge, right? You can see it's already pop, the name pops up already. Or if I want to open um, what plugin, let's say Omnisphere, it's already here. And if I want maybe Purity, it's already here. So if I just click this, double click it, you can see Purity is already loaded up. So the same thing works 
we, if you're also trying to open uh, or rather use um, plugins as well, come here, right click the slots. And then let's say I want to open parametric EQ, right? So you can see parametric EQ2, it's already popped up. Double click it and you can see it's already loaded up easy peasy. So very easy to search for plugins. All you have to remember is the name of the plugin and voila, you have it in here. So for the fifth tip, I know a lot of you like to be very organized. Unlike me, sometimes I can be a bit messy with my projects, but you like to see the thumbnail of the plugins you actually installed, especially for third-party plugins. Now, if I come here, right, my plugin picker, and I look for purity, right, I can't see thumbnail or the icon for it versus if I were to open, let's say, um, Poison or any of the virtual, the stock virtual instruments, right? You can see I can all see the other guys here, but I can't see my third party. I can't see Triton. I can't see Spirity. I can't see Lounge Lizard and the likes. Now, there's an easy way to go around this. It's really easy. All you have to do, all right? So let's come to come to your plugins. But this is best to do this when you're installing the plugin, so you don't have to um, worry yourself about it. So let's come to plugin database um, generators. So maybe you can save it in new if you want to, or whatever category best fits the sound. Maybe it's a synth or whatever somebody, I think I'll save mine in, um, in the new category. Then I'll come to purity. Then I'll come to this drop icon right here by the top left corner. Then I'm going to come right here, says make, um, add plugin to database, right? Not this, add plugin to database. When I do this, you get the security of it added to this subcategory. And now if I come to this section right here, um, insert, open plugin picker, and I type in purity, you can see this is purity's icon showing. And if I double click it, so you can also do the same thing for your effects as well. So let's say I want to use, um, let's say Isotope RX voice the noise, for example, which is one of my favorite voice noise in plugin, all right? So all I have to simply do is come to effects, come to maybe new or whatever category best fits. Uh, or you can even create a category if you open the FL Studio directory. If I click open, I can create a directory, maybe the noising or restoration or whatever. But I'm just going to skip that. I come to new, then I'm going to come right here again, add to plugin database, yes. And then when I come right here and I type in RX Pro, you can see now I have the icon showing up right here. And when I double click it, you can see it's loaded up right here in the mixer. So this helps if you like to organize your project and you like to see everything. Now, I know I said five tips earlier, but this is a bonus tip that can help you organize your project even more. So let's say, for example, um, you want this to come here, that is, you want this track to come up. So typically what you would do before is maybe you just look for an empty track or you right click and then you insert one that is an empty track, then you highlight all of this and then you move it there. How about I show you that if you just hold this with your shift key, just keep your mouse on it with your shift key and then use your mouse wheel and roll. You can see you can easily move anyone to just quickly fit in to the area you want. Maybe you want your drums up there, they're followed by your melodies, followed by whatever effects or automations, depends on how you arrange your projects. For example, I want my drum roll, I want the drum roll to come closer or come up, right? I want my voice tag to be here. And then, you know, and I, maybe you can even introduce space as well. You can select an empty channel and just take it up to introduce some space. So this is an easy way to sort and organize your project. You also do the same thing on your um, channel rack as well. Let's say, for example, you can just select purity, for example, holding my shift key. Then you can see purity is going all the way up to wherever I want them to be. And I can just repeat the same for my plugins as well. Purity goes up. And your project is going to look a lot more organized, especially if I go to start sending out track outs before you even link it to the mixer. It helps organize your workflow. So if you found this helpful, give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to keep up with more tips and tricks and tutorials from me on this channel. See you soon. I'm Sir Classy. This is Essie Toots. Cheers.